Hey, you, before you watch this, pause the f***ing video and subscribe to Semi-Pro right now. What's going on YouTube, Ryan back again with another video, and today, I'm going to tell you about how Andrew Luck ruined the Indianapolis Colts. Andrew Luck was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL, and it looked like Indy was on their way to building a serious contender. Chris Ballard is well respected as being one of the league's best GMs, and he meticulously built this team around one of the greatest quarterback talents the league has ever seen. The offensive line was one of, if not the best in all of football, the receiving core had weapons that Luck could work with, a complimentary running game that wasn't meant to carry the load, and the Colts' bend don't break defense was never meant to win them games, but rather keep them in games. Now that Luck has retired, the Colts were left in relative shambles of their competing roster. Disclaimer. The Colts roster is not bad by any means. I think they'll finish around 500, but they aren't anywhere near the contenders they were hyped up to be, and it's all Andrew Luck's fault. I don't blame Andrew Luck's decision, he did what was best for himself both physically and mentally. But this video isn't about Andrew Luck's mental health, this is a video about the fall of the Indianapolis Colts. If anything, this video shows the importance of Andrew Luck, and how good of a football player he was. If there's anything that Andrew Luck should be blamed for, it's the way he went out. He retired on August 24th during a preseason game. That A is a distraction for the team, and B forces members of the team to have an immediate reaction while addressing fans and media before they really have time to digest. I understand that Luck didn't actively come out with this information, the news was leaked, so that is out of Luck's control, but he was going to retire before the 2019 season anyways, and kickoff was only two weeks away. This puts coach Frank Reich and formerly backup quarterback, now immediately starting quarterback Jacoby Brissett, into a huge role that he wasn't really prepared for. I don't doubt that Luck was in a lot of pain, but there was still a right way to go about it. He was definitely in a tough spot, realizing his pain was only getting worse, but the optics of it just did not look good. Quarterbacks retire all the time, it isn't typically a big deal. The problem was that it happened after free agency, after the draft, after training camp. They would have had almost undoubtedly gone after a QB in either the draft or free agency, and both quarterbacks seemed like a good fit in both positions. The top free agent quarterback last year was Nick Foles, the same Nick Foles that won a Super Bowl with Frank Reich as his offensive coordinator. Foles is young enough that he could have been utilized as a bridge QB similar to what Brissett was or what Rivers is now, but Foles is also young enough that he could be the quarterback of the future if he can develop in that system that he's familiar with. He would never be elite, but he could be an average NFL QB in the right system, and Frank Wright, quite frankly, he knows the guy and it is the best chance at the right system. Or the Colts, they could have gone after Drew Locke. If they wanted to go through the NFL draft, Locke was the option. He was still on the board at 26, which was the first round pick the Colts would have had before they traded it to Washington, and he was on the board at 34, which Indy would have had no matter what. Now, you remember Locke was someone who could have been a top 10 pick and it wouldn't have been outlandish. It was rumored before the draft that the Broncos were going to take him at 10, and then it certainly wouldn't have been outlandish in the late first round. The problem is that Luck has set the Colts back two years because they were forced to have two bridge quarterbacks in Brissett last year and then this year in Rivers. Indianapolis had a chance last year to get a young quarterback, but this year they didn't really have that opportunity. They would have had the 13th pick and Jordan Love would have been a large reach at that selection. And Hurts really didn't feel like the right choice in the second round, and there weren't any QBs in free agency who could be potential future quarterbacks, quite frankly. Rivers was the only one who had any ties to the coaching staff, with Reich being a coach for him in San Diego, and he definitely isn't the quarterback of the future either. It's hard to be when you're in your late 30s. Indy would have a Super Bowl caliber core if they had a good QB. They just don't have one of those top tier quarterbacks anymore. And it was impossible to get one over the past two years since Luck retired. And it still might not be possible next year. Because the almost exclusive way you can get a new QB is through the draft. But the Colts, they're going to be average. 
they're going to finish around 8-8, eight and eight, which kind of sucks for them because they won't have a top draft pick. And even if they get a QB, the foundation of the roster isn't certain to stay in Indy. Coming into last season, I was a huge Colts fan, and they were one of my Super Bowl frontrunners. But now the Colts are being faced with being stuck in mediocrity. Same as some teams like the Falcons, the Cowboys, and the Titans. It's fine. It's fine to be fine. But fine doesn't win. And they had something great with Andrew Luck. And they didn't really have a chance to rebound from it. 